This is the temporality of different study designs. This has been adapted from a figure found in UWorld. We have a time arrow here, and you can see past, present, and future delineated with different colors. First study design is clinical trials. These require data collection and exposure or interventions that occur forward in time. Researchers control the intervention and participants are randomly assigned to groups in randomized control trials. These have the strongest evidence for causality. So they start in the present, you have a treatment group and a control group, and you compare for the outcome of interest in the future, again with the researchers controlling the intervention in randomly assigned groups. The next study design is a prospective cohort. In these studies, you have data collection and exposure assessment that also moves forward in time, and the exposure occurs naturally. It's not controlled. You follow participants to observe outcomes, and you obtain a relative risk in the end. This is good for rare exposures and multiple outcomes. So in these studies, you start with patients that have a risk factor and patients that don't have a risk factor, and you compare disease incidence. So you end up with an incidence and a relative risk. Next is the retrospective cohort. In this, both exposure and outcomes have already occurred, and you're doing data collection from existing records and databases. The analysis moves backwards from the present, and you again calculate a relative risk, just like in the prospective cohort. This is faster and cheaper than prospective studies. So you're starting in the present here, you're reviewing past records and looking at who had the risk factor and who did not. And again, you're comparing disease incidence, just like you were in the prospective cohort. And again, you end up with a relative risk, like in the prospective cohort. The next study design is the case control study. In this case, you start with the outcome. You have cases and controls, and you look backward to assess, to assess exposures, and you obtain an odds ratio. So you have diseased cases and non-diseased controls, and you're looking backwards to compare risk factor frequency. This is efficient for rare diseases, although you can't do inc incidence or prevalence studies. You cannot obtain an incidence or a prevalence like you could in the prospective cohort. Um, this is also subject to recall bias. There's also a cross-sectional study. This is when exposure and outcomes are measured at the same time point, and it provides a snapshot of the population. You cannot establish temporal sequence because they're both occurring at the same time point, and it's good for prevalence estimates. So this is all happening in the present. You have patients that do have a risk factor and that do not have it, and you can compare disease prevalence. But again, you cannot establish temporal sequence.